Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice system of differential equations. We have dy over dt equals x plus y plus 1 and dx over dt equals y minus x. x and y are both functions of t, so we're talking about derivatives with respect to t here. I'm going to go ahead and call dy over dt y prime and I will call the second one x prime. Notice that x prime does not equal 1 because we're not differentiating with respect to x. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how we can solve these kinds of problems. Obviously, there's more than one way to approach it. And if you do know of alternative methods, please let us know in the comment section down below. So I'm going to start by setting z equal to ax plus by. We're going to go ahead and determine a and b in a little bit. But my goal is to be able to write z as a linear combination of x and y. And you'll see why this is helpful in a little bit. So let's go ahead and evaluate z prime. Since x and y are functions, we're going to differentiate with respect to t. And if you differentiate ax plus by, because a and b are constants, this is going to become ax prime plus by prime. Notice that I can replace x prime and y prime with something, so z prime becomes a times x prime, which is y minus x, plus b times y prime, which is x plus y plus 1. Remember, when we named those y prime and x prime, we already knew those. Now, my goal is the following. We wrote z as a linear combination of x and y, and I want to write z prime as a linear function of z, okay? In other words, I want to be able to write z prime as a constant times z plus another constant. Make sense? Great. Let's go ahead and distribute this. We're going to get ay minus ax plus bx plus by plus b. And then let's go ahead and put the x's together and the y's together. So we have bx minus ax. So let's factor out x and then a plus b y and the constant here we go so i want this to be my constant and i want this to be z so that z prime can be written as actually not just z a multiple of z so z prime can be written as kz plus b hopefully you get the idea because if i can do that then this will be very easy to solve make sense so from two variables, we're going to switch to a single variable, which we can solve easily. Well, sort of. So how do we achieve that? Well, since I want this whole thing to be kz, right, I get the following. b minus a multiplied by x plus a plus b multiplied by y. Let me fix this x a little bit. Kind of looks weird. And that is my expression plus the b right? Now this is supposed to equal, without the b actually, I want it to be equal to kz. So that, uh, let's go ahead and set it equal to k times z, which is what? What is z? z is x plus by. Great. Now let's go ahead and distribute. We're going to make a comparison here, kind of like looking at two polynomials that are equal to each other. kax plus kby. Now notice that the coefficient of b minus a is x here, which is supposed to equal ka, a multiple of a. And the coefficient of y is a plus b, which can be written as kb. So what am I getting from here, right? Well, first of all, I can go ahead and divide these expressions side by side. And hopefully that will give me something helpful. Divide and divide k is going to cancel out and from here we get by after cross multiplying b squared minus ab equals a squared plus ab let's go ahead and put everything on the left hand side b squared minus ab minus ab is 2ab and then let's leave the a squared on the right hand side because i'm about to complete the square let's go ahead and add and i kind of want to uh, space it out a little bit so that i can add what i need oops i meant to do this with the other color so we have a squared here and now I'm going to go ahead and add a squared to both sides 
so that the left hand side becomes b minus a quantity squared and the right hand side becomes 2a squared great this is going to give us an idea about a and b what they look like uh, we can take square roots on both sides and solve this as a quadratic equation so the first solution will be coming from b minus a equals root 2a and the second one is just going to be b minus a equals negative root 2a there are two solutions let's just go ahead and solve use one of these let's take the second one this time because almost all the time we take the first and let's proceed with this and then whatever we do with this one is going to be the exact same thing that we're supposed to do with the second one so that you can follow the same path make sense because you'll see in a little bit this is going to be a little bit of time consuming so bear with me so b minus a equals negative root 2a let's go ahead and add a to both sides and factor out a so we can write this as a multiple of a in other words b over a is a constant so what am i getting from here let's go ahead and set a equal to one then b will be one minus root two just for simplicity's sake so we got a and b values obviously their multiples will also work but z remember was written as ax plus by now we can write it as x plus 1 plus root 2 y notice that now z is a linear combination of x and y great now we're going to do the z prime how do you do z prime you just differentiate it it's supposed to be x prime plus 1 minus root 2 multiplied by y prime remember x and y are functions of t so x prime and y prime are with respect to t Great. Now, the next step would be being able to write z prime as a multiple of z plus a constant. And you know that constant is going to be b, which is 1 minus root 2. So that kind of helps a little bit. But let's go ahead and replace x prime with what? x prime is equal to, let's go back to the beginning. And, uh-oh, x prime is y minus x, right? So this is y minus x plus 1 minus root 2 times. What is y prime? Do you remember? x plus y plus 1. Awesome. So we're going to arrange the terms a little bit. Let's go ahead and write this as negative root 2x plus 2 minus root 2y. That's going to be the coefficient of y. And we're going to have a leftover, which is the constant, 1 minus root 2. You know that it's going to be that because this is b, remember? Right? Great. Now, from here, z prime can be written as follows. Remember, we were trying to write this as a multiple of z plus a constant. And z is x plus, z is x plus, uh-oh, 1 minus root 2y. So I kind of need to take out a negative root 2. That's going to give me x plus 1 minus root 2y, which happens to be z, right? And then we're going to have the additional 1 minus root 2. In other words, z prime can be written as negative root 2z plus 1 minus root 2. How is that helpful? You'll see in a little bit now. Since x and y are functions of t, z is also a function of t because it's the linear combination of x and y. So we can talk about this uh, or write it as z dz over dt. Now this is super helpful because this is a separable differential equation. Awesome. Let's go ahead and put the z on the left-hand side. It's going to be negative root 2z plus 1 minus root 2 equals dt. And we can integrate both sides. Easy, right? Sort of. Good. So notice that the denominator, even though it kind of looks very a um, little bit of confusing, but it's basically like something like mz plus b. And it's 1 over that. So the integral is going to be ln, but you have to kind of take the con uh, integral into consideration. In other words, dz over mz plus b, if you integrate that, you're going to get 1 over m times the ln of mz plus b. You could use absolute value, but I'm not going to use it, but you get the idea. Make sense? So let's go ahead and integrate this. This is going to be negative 1 over root 2 multiplied by ln of the denominator which is negative root 2z plus 1 minus root 2. By the way this constant doesn't matter because this derivative is 0. Make sense? And of course this is going to equal the integral of dt and I'm going to put the constant on the right hand side this time using c because we already used a and b. Right? Great. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by negative root 2 to get rid of that fraction. ln of negative root 2z 
plus 1 minus root 2 equals negative root 2t minus root 2c, which you can call something else like maybe c sub 1. I don't know. And then you can just go ahead and, you know, uh, try to find z from here. Our goal is to find z. How would you find it? By doing e to the power of both sides, right? So if you do e to the power of this and e to the power of that, e to the power of ln something is going to be something. So it's going to be negative root 2z plus 1 minus root 2 equals e to the power negative root 2t times e to the power negative c1. Or if I called it positive, because I, ble I believe I included the negative sign, so it will be e to the power c1. I don't need the plus sign. It was just, uh, you know, just for emphasis. Now, this is another constant, so I guess I can turn it into c sub 2. And now we can write this as negative root 2z plus 1 minus root 2 equals e to the power c sub 1, which I can call c sub 2, e to the power negative root 2t. Great. Now this is an equation that I have, right? Now what can I do with this? Oh, by the way, we're not done yet because we still have to replace z with something. And what is z equal to? Remember that? z is equal to x plus 1 minus root 2 y. So let's go ahead and do that. Replace z with x plus 1 minus root 2 y. So we can go into the x and y word. Plus 1 minus root 2 equals c sub 2 times e to the power negative root 2 t. So that is one equation. Now, remember we used one of the roots, which was b equals 1 minus root 2a. Now, if you go ahead and use the other root, which was 1 plus root 2a, from here again, you can take a equals 1 and b equals 1 plus root 2. And then kind of go through the same thing. And you're going to get another equation for z prime and integrate it, so on and so forth. And at the end, we get a nice system. Just kidding. It won't be nice at all. <laughs> So, but it's going to be a lot of work and you can do it as an exercise. That'll be good for you. And now let's go ahead and look at the result from Wolfram Alpha. These are going to be the X and Y values according to Wolfram Alpha. Of course, it's not simplified, but you get the idea. Quite complicated. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.